Level 3 Personal Training Anatomy and Physiology Planes of Movement By the end of this session you will be able to identify the anatomical axis and planes with regard to joint actions and different exercises. Planes of movement. Your body doesn't move in one dimension. Your body moves in three dimensions and the training programs you design for your clients should reflect that. Designing an exercise program that utilizes all planes of motion will help your clients train their body in the same manner that it moves in real life. There are three different planes of motion, sagittal, frontal, and transverse. In each plane, several different movements occur at the joints. An illustration showing the three planes of movement. First, the frontal plane. Second one, the sagittal plane. Third one, transverse plane. Let's look at the frontal plane first. There's lots of movements that can occur within the frontal plane. Adduction, which is a motion towards the midline of the body. Abduction, a motion away from the midline of the body. Elevation, moving to a superior position, but only occurring at the scapula. Depression, moving to an inferior position, only at the scapula. Inversion, lifting the medial border of the foot. And eversion, lifting the lateral border of the foot. There are different movements that can occur within the sagittal plane. Flexion, decreasing the angle between two bones. Extension, increasing the angle between two bones. Dorsiflexion, moving the top of the foot towards the shin. Plantar flexion, moving the sole of the foot downward. These joint movements occur in the transverse plane. Rotation, which can be internal or external. Pronation, rotating the hand and wrist medially from the bone. Supination, rotating the hand and wrist laterally from the bone. Horizontal flexion. From the 90 degree abducted arm position, the humerus is flexed in toward the midline of the body in the transverse plane. Horizontal extension, return of the humerus from horizontal flexion. That's all a bit confusing, so for a clearer understanding, we can view the planes as they relate to exercises performed in a workout session. Let's look at the frontal plane again. In the frontal plane, we divide the body into the front and back. Any lateral movement parallel to the line will occur in the frontal plane. For example, lateral raises, shoulder shrugs, side bends, or jumping jacks. Dividing the body into left and right halves using an imaginary line gives us the sagittal plane. Any forward and backward movement parallel to this line occurs in the sagittal plane. For example, when carrying out a deadlift, a squat, a lunge, back extensions, front raise, bicep curl, calf raise, and forward running.
The transverse plane divides the body into top and bottom halves. Movement parallel to the waistline, otherwise known as rotational movement, occurs in the transverse plane. Examples of this would be the wood chop, Russian twists, oblique curls, swinging a bat or a golf club, carrying out a pet fly or cable crossovers. Axis of movement. An axis is a straight line around which an object rotates. Movement at a joint takes place in a plane about an axis. There are three axes of rotation. The first axis of movement is the anterior to posterior axis. This axis of movement occurs in the frontal plane. The second axis of movement is the medial to lateral axis. This movement occurs in the sagittal plane. And finally, the third axis of movement is the longitudinal axis. This movement occurs in the transverse plane. Can you now identify the anatomical axis and planes with regard to joint actions and different exercises? For more health and fitness education, visit www.stormfitnessacademy.co.uk.